Welcome to Lesson 6, Cameras. We'll start off by going over the camera controls, including different ways of interacting with cameras. Then we'll look at special camera functions found in different parts of the interface. Next, we'll understand the different types of cameras and what they're used for. After that, we'll learn how to work with multiple viewports so we can look through different cameras at the same time. Finally, we'll explore the unique camera parameters and create cinematography effects like depth of field. All right, let's play with cameras. Okay, here we are with our race to the muffin scene that we created in lesson four. If you followed along and saved it out, go ahead and load it up. It's going to be the perfect scene to work with for our cameras. So if you don't have this, no worries. Just get any two figures loaded side by side. It could be Andy. It could be any two people. Doesn't matter. They don't even need to be posed out. Just side by side. And uh, also, you want to make sure your ground plane is off. So if you're looking at this background, hit Command or Control G, and you can shut it off. So I want to modify a couple of things based off this Lesson 4 scene. Come down to Background Color. And I want to create an, a background color, anything other than white. I just pick your favorite color. And now we can see the white camera callout text up here. And that uh, is basically letting you know whatever your active current viewing camera is. So let's say I do something like a change to the face camera, Command or Control Plus. Well, the text is telling us you're on face camera. So back to the main camera. And now with this darker background, uh, the characters are having the illusion that they're darker uh, than they were before. So let's play with our lights a bit. This is the same light setup. We worked from the very first uh, Andy uh, default poser scene. And so this is the basic lights. Let's just go ahead and modify them a bit. Now, if we click on a light, it becomes the active editing uh, element in our parameters palette and properties. But you can also select lights up from the drop down, go down to lights, start at the top, and just one by one, click shadows off. It leaves the light on, but disables shadows. And so we'll just go through each one and turn shadows off like that. We're going to work thoroughly with lights in the very next video. So just hang tight and uh, follow along. Okay, all shadows off. Let's come back to the uh, lights controls here and create a new light by clicking on this little sunshine icon. And I'm going to bring it somewhere about right there, front left kind of thing. Back to properties with that light selected. I'm going to, or actually change it from a spotlight to an infinite light. And we'll leave shadows on for that one new light. Look how much more three dimensional our scene looks now. So uh, now let's move on to cameras. And we already know a lot about cameras so far. We know what most of the controls are in the palette. We know how to change different camera types. We even know about the uh, mini camera controls up here. Now, if you've been wondering how I've been moving my camera around without touching any controls, well, I'm going to tell you, I'm using a 3D mouse, OK? It does the exact same things that the poser camera controls do but it just does it with a simple 3D mouse. It's a piece of hardware. And uh, I suspect many of you are using a 3D mouse. And I mention it because Poser provides excellent support for the 3D mouse. It works perfectly. And so I highly suggest looking into it. It kind of makes working uh, with your cameras in Poser kind of like a video game controller where you just use a single joystick to uh, move around your scene like a first person perspective. It's really awesome. So there's a couple other ways to interactively uh, work with the camera as well. Hold down Alt on your keyboard and your mouse pointer turns to a little camera icon. Well, now you can click and drag and rotate your camera view just like so. And if you hold down Spacebar and click and drag, you can now pan your camera in any direction you want like so. Okay, so lots of options for how to work with the camera. Now let's go ahead and explore some of the features for the cameras that we haven't. We've got over here these little icons at the bottom, frame selected object and orbit selected mode. And we see the same duplications of those features up here in our mini camera controls that do the same thing. So frame selected object, well, that's a pretty easy one. It does just what the name implies. I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard for the select tool. I'm going to click on the end of Edgar's tie. You can really click on anything and then hit that frame selected button. And it does just that. It frames that element and it jumps the camera right in there. So a real quick way I'm going to undo to just snap in around that object. 
I'll do it again on a bigger object like his head, and bam, it jumps our camera closer. Now the next feature, right next to it, this orbit selected mode, you've already been using it and you just don't know it. The arrow wrapping around it means it's on. Of course you could click it off if you like, like so. I'm going to leave it on. And what that does, just go ahead and click your trackball and you can see that we're orbiting around Edgar's head. What that means is that it's using the selected object, in this case his head, as a pivot for a camera. So we are pivoting around his head, okay? And so we could change our pivot for our camera based on whatever we have selected. All right, if I select, say, Minnie's head, now watch, we can see that she is the pivot now, okay? And it works basically on anything in your scene that you have selected. So handy little features there. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to uh, some more stuff in the camera controls palette. Now we've explored some of the camera types. Here's some icons for the most common ones, the hands and face cams. Up here we have the full list of all the cameras. Let's jump through them real quick. The main camera, we already have a good understanding of that. That's your general all-purpose camera. And then we'll jump to auxiliary camera. And it's again just like the main camera. It's a general purpose camera. And it behaves just like the main. But notice that also this uh, little big icon in the middle changed, okay? And that's going to change based on the camera you have loaded. And it gives you an indication of what that camera is. So if we jump to one of the hand cameras real quick, well, it gives you the logical icon, the hand, right? And if you click on this one at a time, it's just toggling through the many different types of cameras for you uh, without having to get into the menu here. So let's go back to auxiliary and let me explain what that's for. Let's say you are on, actually, I'm going to go to the main camera. And let's say we got this nice camera composition and done. I don't want to move the camera anymore because I want to render from this view but I still want to make changes to my character uh, so I can do a bunch of different test renders. Well, you would use your auxiliary camera as sort of a utility camera to be able to change and not be afraid to change its composition. Then you could come in, make your changes to whatever you want to do, and then always jump back to your main camera and you've got your camera composition ready to render. So different ways of using the cameras. Now, if we go down, we see this next section of cameras all bundled together. These are orthographic cameras, which means they cannot change perspective. The first one, from left, well, it's looking at a perfectly from stage left view through the x-axis of the scene, perfectly centered in that 3D space looking through the x-axis. And so notice your trackball is grayed out. Even if you try and click, you cannot trackball the scene. You cannot rotate your camera. Of course, the other camera controls work. We can come in and out. We can go panning up and left and down and right, okay? And so it's useful for alignment if you want to perfectly align things up, uh, knowing that you're in a perfect orthographic view and aligning your objects around that. Um, but let's go explore some of the other orthographic views, like the top one is a nice one. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And so this is helpful. Now we got a bird's eye top view. And if I click on, say, Edgar's body, I'll hit T for translate, and this is great for moving things around the scene. Uh, so different ways of uh, working with the different cameras to achieve different things. That would have been harder to do using a lot of parameters and such uh, from the main camera view here. So feel free to go ahead and explore the different orthographic views, okay? Uh, they're, they're basically, you have one from each uh, angle of the scene. Next, we have this group of parented uh, orbiting cameras. So we already know about three of them face camera, and we know that this basically snaps into the face of your currently selected character, okay? And as we rotate, we stay fixed on the head. Again, it's using that head as a pivot, right? Well, what's really cool is when you got more than one character in the scene, if I click anywhere on Mini, or even select her from, say, the drop-down menu, look at this. The camera automatically jumps to her head. Uh, the same face camera. And Poser will automatically reparent the camera and reset the orbit to pivot around her head. So let me explain how they're parented. That's a little bit harder to understand unless I show you an extreme example. So excuse me, I'm going to go into my Henry VIII mode and I'm going to say off with her head. And uh, I'm going to select her head and then translate the X 
and her head is going off. But notice the camera is following the head. You see that? So it's truly parented to the head. So I will restore her rights and put her head gently back on her shoulders. So that's how those cameras work as far as the parenting and orbiting and pivot goes. So we know that the same is true for the left and right hand cameras. We've already worked with these. Same exact pivoting and parenting idea. Now the last one we haven't touched on yet is posing camera. And this is really cool because the posing cameras, again, it's depending on the character you have selected, but it orbits uh, around the entire body group ring of your selected character. And again, if I say grab uh, Minnie's body group and I translate it up with the T for translate tool, see the, the camera is following her body group. And even though she's up here, if I click on Edgar down here, See the camera completely resets, and now it's parented to him, and it's using him as a pivot, okay? So I will just come back to the main camera, and I'm going to undo that, moving her up in space. All right, just pull out a little bit here. And let's continue on the list. We've got uh, next is Dolly camera. It's in its own little section because it's truly a unique camera. And what you'll notice about this, Dolly cameras, uh, basically, they are the only cameras that work exactly like a real-world Hollywood-style camera or a camcorder, if you own one. You know that it'll basically, look at this motion, it's not pivoting around anything, okay? Even with orbit selected mode, these cameras act like they're on a tripod and it's orbiting on itself. You see that? And so when you want to mimic a, a realistic sort of a camera move, all right, where it looks like someone's holding the camera, you can achieve that effect with the dolly camera like so. All right, so next up is, uh, what do we got, fly around. If you just select that, it actually is using the main camera, but it does a fly around of the scene, and if you hover your mouse, you can get a nice glimpse and change your angle. Uh, it's just a reference tool so you can see what's going on in your scene from all angles. So I'll just click out of there. And then finally, we've got shadow cams. Notice there's five shadow cams, and we have five lights in the scene. Every light comes with a shadow camera attached to it. And so Poser uses shadow cams to calculate shadows for the light, but it also lets you view through those. So it's really helpful to view through your light in your shadow cam for that light, so you could see where exactly is that light coming from, Okay, so we get a sense that this light, say, right here is coming from the uh, right side of the scene. And uh, let me go back to the main camera. And notice the lights move around, right, when I move my camera uh, to really keep you uh, well informed about how those lights are positioned. So I can tell that this light here, light four, is off to the right uh, rear uh, behind our camera, perhaps, and off to the right looking at the front quarter angle of the scene. So if we want to look through that light shadow cam, we would come up here, come down to shadow cam for light four, and look, we're now, we've got that exact look on the scene that we thought. Of course, it's pretty far out there, but it is got that quarter angle look on our stage, okay? And so you could uh, manipulate this camera just like any other and come in and adjust. So if you want to have a uh, very specific control of your shadows, um, one way to do that is to jump into its uh, shadow camera, and then you could manipulate how your shadows are falling that way. So there's our camera types. There's a lot of them. And you can also create your own cameras. If you come up to Object, come down to Create Camera, and you got the two types, uh, your dolly camera, of course, like a real-world camera, and then a revolving camera, which is probably what you're going to want to use for the most part because they're just so much easier to work with. So we just created a revolving camera it automatically uh, snaps into our current camera, and it's also in our parameters palette. If I come to Properties, click on the name, I can rename it to anything I want, such as my camera. Okay, and so now that we've got that going, uh, we can do something interesting with it, uh, with any camera, or really anything in Poser, uh, but we'll do it with a camera here. We can go to Object, Point At, and we can select whatever we want this camera to constantly point at. So let's say we want to always point on uh, Edgar's head. Hit OK. 
And now start moving your camera around. Start rotating it. Notice that no matter what you do, Edgar's head is center of focus. It's in the center of a camera view. And no matter what we do, it's like this uh, hyper focus on his head. You could create some pretty emotional shots with this technique where it's very clear that you're focusing on that character. Okay? So the point at feature. All right? So another thing I'll touch on is a, a couple of little uh, things here. For starters, you've got this uh, little key here in your palette. That's to toggle animation on and off. So if you're working over different uh, frames uh, and you don't want uh, Poser to automatically create animation for camera changes, just hit the key till it turns red and it will no longer animate uh, your current camera. All right? And then this little wraparound arrow, that's the same fly around uh, tool that we already use where it flies around in the scene. Okay? So another uh, couple useful things here. Remember UI dots? Well, if you click the drop down, you got camera dots. Okay? So I've already created a few samples here. Let me just delete them by alt clicking. And let's go ahead and create a few dots. I'm going to go to my main camera, Commander Control M. And let's say I really like this camera composition. Well, create a dot for it. And now change it to something extremely different. And then create a dot for that. And just like with the UI, you can snap back to those different views. So pretty handy to have just instant access to saving out different uh, camera compositions. Now, if you want to save out camera animations, multi-frame camera moves, and as many camera compositions as you want, then don't forget about our library. You've got your camera section up here. You can save out as many camera compositions uh, as you want. And you can also load a lot of different camera compositions that Poser has set up. If you take a look, explore these and try them out. I'll just go ahead and hit one, say, uh, three-quarter bottom left. Let's hit that and it automatically adjust to some interesting camera perspectives. So take a look at those, okay? I'm going to go ahead and collapse that and I'm going to restore my camera. Commander Control, Shift H and let's move on to viewports, okay? If we come down to the bottom left uh, document window, we've got this little tab here, the very first one, and this is to change our viewports. Uh, we've been working with the full port, but click on four ports. Look at that, pretty cool. We can look through four cameras at once. And the red border, very thin here, but you can click on it, and that's basically the active port that your camera controls will affect. So if I come down to, say, the main camera one, and I move my controls, we can see it's updating it there. Also, if you click in any of the ports, you can change what camera that that is. So let's use our same shortcuts, uh, Command or Control Plus, and I'll change that to a face camera. So you can customize your viewports however you want to show whatever cameras you want. And we can also change the layouts of the ports. And I'll come down to a different one, two ports left and right. And I'm going to change this one on the left. I can select the uh, top camera from here. And now I've got a bird's eye view on the left and my main camera view over here. Let me show you what awesome things you can do with different port layouts. If I select, say, Edgar's body, I hit T for translate. And watch this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to come back to this port. I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can really see what's going on. I'm going to come back and select Edgar's body. I've got T for translate. Grab his body group and I'm going to translate him back in space and look at that as I'm actually doing it on the left I see the effect through my main camera on the right and so we can really have this awesome way to interactively make changes to our scene I'm going to show you something even cooler let me back out a bit on this top camera view um, what's really cool is that you can see uh, your actual cameras themselves this camera here is the face camera. As uh, we would expect, it's pretty close to his face. And back here, if you click on it, we can see it's the main camera. Okay? Now, that camera that we're selecting here is this actual camera that we can see on the right. So if I click and drag this camera and move it closer to the people, look at that. This is really where it starts to feel like a more physical experience. Like we're on set, we can click and drag and move this camera however we want. And if you click M for the manipulator, 
you get your nice manipulator rotation bands and we can start doing some interesting stuff here. So I'm rotating the camera and orbiting it and I get the instant update there. So pretty cool different ways to work with ports and make them work for you. Finally, I'll let you know that if you hit the D key on your keyboard, that is a nice little shortcut to toggle back to your main camera view. And uh, you can hit D again to snap right back into your last port layout, okay? So I'll just go back. And uh, so have fun with ports. It can definitely make things a bit easier to work with in Poser. So let's go ahead and move on to checking out the uh, parameters for the cameras now because they are unique. So we notice our parameters palette over here and uh, whatever we select shows up in the parameters palette. Everything except for cameras. Now we can select a camera uh, over here, but this only selects our current viewing camera. It does not select it as an editable object in parameters. So there's a few ways to do that. Well, for one, we could come down to our drop down list and go to cameras and select any camera to edit. So I could select a different camera, such as posing, that I'm not even currently viewing through. I'm viewing through the main camera, but I'm working to edit the posing camera here. Now, what you can do, of course, is select the main camera from this list, but what's faster is your camera controls in your mini controls up here and back over at your palette. If you click and release on any of those controls, what just happened is that Poser automatically selects your current viewing camera as your active object in your parameters palette. I'll do it one more time. I'll select Edgar's arm just to deselect the camera but we're looking through the main camera. I click on a, any camera control icon and bam, it automatically selects our main camera. Very handy feature, I use it endlessly. So let's explore some uh, of these parameters. We've got the transforms and these work a lot like a character. We probably know that the Dolly Z goes in and out and that's much like the Dolly Z tools from our camera controls, right? So it just separates them out on their individual axes so you have very precise control. Of course, the trackball gives us this nice loose rotation, but it's a bit too loose sometimes. And so if you want really nice, back out a bit here, really nice control with single axis orbits, that's what I love the parameters for. And so it's a nice fixed uh, rotation there. Okay, so the, now those are self-explanatory. We got something else here though, scale. If I take the scale and I bump it down, it shrinks our camera. And it also brings our camera down to the floor level and closer to the center of the stage. And look at the effect. This is pretty cool if you want to create camera compositions that look like we're through the point of view of, say, a little critter or like a little puppy or something like that. This is a cool use for that. So I'm going to go ahead and restore my camera, Command or Control Shift H, and let's try it the other way. Let's scale up. All right. And now we've got got the opposite perspective like we're a giant okay like Jack and the Beanstalk looking down at uh, our characters trying to get our beans or something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and restore the camera again and you can also use this scale as sort of a crash zoom tool if you want so just be aware of what scale does and uh, let's get up to uh, the fun stuff the other uh, category here for our camera parameter dials now for starters shutter open and close you will only notice the effects of this if you have motion blur on in your render settings and you render out images. This helps you have direct control over the motion blur quality and how much motion blur there is in the scene. So we will just uh, come back to motion blur in a later video. Now we've also got hither and yawn. Let me help you understand what those do. You have this thing called clipping planes in your camera. If you get too close, watch what happens. It starts to clip his face off. You see that? And that's the clipping plane. We've reached the clipping plane limits and you can just dial back the hither and fix that real quick like that. Okay? Now, likewise, you also have a clipping. Now that's your near clipping plane. You have a far clipping plane way out back there in the back of the scene. I'm talking way back there. So if you get into some real big world projects, you might notice that your objects disappear just like we saw with the near clipping plane and your yawn will 
help fix that, okay? So let's get really to the fun stuff now, and we're gonna find that with the focal length and these other dials at the top. These are really awesome. I love these because it works like a real world camera does. They work exactly. I highly suggest going online and doing a quick search on camera settings. It doesn't even have to be for Poser because they work just like a real camera does. And so if you learn about real cameras, you'll have a lot of knowledge for how to work with Poser cameras. So to start with, we're looking with a 50 millimeter lens right now. Uh, and just like with the real camera, we can change our lens size. And so uh, 15 millimeter is the default because that's generally how our human eye sees. But you can dial this down for dramatic effects. Let me just bring it all the way down to a nice wide angle lens fisheye effect, like uh, somewhere around a 10. But when you do that, it basically gives the perception that your characters are farther away, just like with a real camera in real life. So what you have to do is adjust your distance, uh, your actual physical distance from the camera to your scene. So we could uh, use the Dolly Z and just track our camera back in and look at the effect we got. This is this nice fisheye wide angle lens effect. Okay, so when you want to get really dramatic for certain types of shots, you can make use of this. It really pops things in 3D, okay? And likewise, I'm going to go ahead and restore my camera. Command and Control Shift H. Back to 50 millimeter. You can bump things up to a nice long lens, what they call telephoto, like 100 millimeters. And what that does is it sort of flattens everything out. So you could get long panning shots, having an entire city all in scene there. So check that out, the different types of, of lenses. I'll just restore it again. And uh, even cooler, is this perspective. Now, as we just touched on, you have to make adjustments for your dolly position for extreme changes in your focal length of your lens, all right? But what's great is Poser provides this special perspective dial that will do both at once. It knows that if you want to dial more of a wide angle lens, watch it happens. We get our wide angle lens, but it also, in one dial, not only adjusted our lens, but it automatically offset our dolly to keep our relative way that we're viewing the characters the same. And so it already moved the camera for us even though we really didn't see it happen as far as how we perceive what's going on here. So that's a really awesome feature to change both at once to keep yourself right there close to your, your, your scene. So let's move on and uh, I'm going to restore the camera one more time and let's start to uh, to work with depth of field here. It's a very awesome effect and we can have some fun with it. I'm going to enter in, let's say 40 for my focal length lens. I want you to restore your camera, Command or Control Shift H, and just track in evenly. Don't do any extreme rotations, just come in nice and straight on, maybe something like that. Now I'm going to hit the uh, D key to come back to my viewport, I'm going to select Edgar's body and I'm going to select the uh, T for translate and I want to put his body back in space so that we can really take advantage of some depth of filled effects here. Something like that I think will work. And then I'll just hit D, click in the scene once, and then I can hit D to get back to our scene. So he doesn't look like it here, but he's really way back behind her. But everything is perfectly in focus in our preview. And depth of field will blur, just like with real life cameras, it'll blur out things that are farther out of the depth of field. And so let's go ahead and just click anywhere on these icons to make our camera active again here. And you've got this really cool effect here, focus distance, okay? And basically, there is this setting on a real camera, but what's cool about Poser is it gives you this nice visual indicator. We can see it cutting right through Mini. I want her to be the center of the depth of field, and that looks good. And of course, if I go to my viewports, I can also see it in the different axes and from that bird's eye view. So I'll just go back there. I want it to just right cut through her so that her face is in perfect clarity, and then 
basically I want Edgar to start to get blurred and to make this really look very three-dimensional. And so the f-stop, just like with the real-life camera, it affects how much light gets into the camera. The lower the f-stop, the less light that enters the camera, and so the more increased the depth of field effect becomes. A higher f-stop allows more light, and you get a decreased depth of field. I'm going to knock this down to like 1.4, something like that. Now, let's go up to uh, Render, Render Settings, and we could do this with Superfly. I want to keep this real simple and easy for now. We'll get into rendering later. Come to the Firefly tab, turn Subscattering off, make sure Indirect Light is also checked off, and for now, leave Depth of Field right here, leave it checked off. I want to do a comparison render with and without depth of field. First, we'll do it without, so we can compare. So let's just go ahead and hit the render button. And we got our progress bar there. It's rendering pretty quickly. And look, everything is crisp, perfectly focused, both characters, regardless of Z depth. Sometimes that's what you want, that's okay. Now let's really try and do what Pixar does. They create beautiful films and they treat their CG 3D cameras like a real world camera, and we can do the same thing. We got our settings all set up. Let's go back into render, render settings, and turn depth of field on. Now watch the magic happen. We'll hit render now down on the bottom. Here's the progress. Here's my favorite part waiting for our scene to come alive. Okay, and now we can see that Edgar, he is definitely blurry but we don't have enough pixel samples in the scene so it's not looking so good let's go back up to render render settings again and i'm going to bump up pixel samples i'm going to double it to six it's going to take a little longer to render but the quality is going to be way better i'll just render again and now that'll fix all that grainy issue and we're going to have a beautiful depth of field render here and there we have it Pretty awesome, huh? And we even see the blurring that's starting to gradually go back in Z-Space. It's a little bit blurry on her hand and her feet, and it slowly gets more and more blurry the farther you go back in your scene. So there it is, folks. Some really awesome controls of the camera. You can really act like a cinematographer if you want and really compose some awesome shots using camera and depth of field. I hope you had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.